staff, friends and relatives, I'm so glad to be here. My talk today, though, is for the students. For students, 50 years have gone by since I was sitting in your very seat. It was a brand new chapel at that time here at IC High School. I was then hearing speeches from people that Martina Plunkett and Principal Sister Carmel brought in to inspire us. Little did I know that someday I would be here talking to you, trying to inspire you. Yes, the world has changed over the 50 years in many ways, but not with core values of hard work, perseverance, eagerness to serve, and valuing family and friends. These were instilled in me in Catholic education. From the beginning, my schooling was a struggle. If I was living today, they would have labeled me learning disabled. Entering kindergarten at Our Lady of Angels School in Chicago, I had the classic signs of a person with learning disability. I had a poor sense of direction, still do, um, would mispronounce words, could not rhyme, was disorganized, and had trouble cutting and pasting. One story was told of me being totally unaware that I had lost the shoe. Someone gave the shoe to the BBM nun who was teaching 50 students by herself. She had us all stop, look down at our feet. Who was missing a shoe? We got it, it was me. When I was in sixth grade, our family moved to Elmhurst. And my sister, Sharon and Sheila, confusing, right? And I entered IT grade school. This was a very exciting time in my next step in the continuing Catholic education. It was also my first introduction to my lifelong friends. My friends and I were the lucky ones, as you students are now. Our parents sacrificed so that we could attend this special, small, value-driven high school, IC High. My friends and I didn't know what a great gift this was at the time. Often we were immature. <laughs> we would do silly things just for a laugh. Some memories were when the Sisters of St. Agnes and Monsignor Plunkett always were trying to be steadfast and model and saying things to help us mature. Each time the porch cards came out, my senior prophet, who was a scout man, would come to our class in his black vestments and hold his hands over his stomach and talk to us. Our secret agenda was to count how many, is that right, hmm, he would say. One time we counted 15, hmm. This crazy, immature thing we did didn't really matter, since we still all heard the message of developing the whole man, spiritually, mentally, and physically. I am sure all of my friends have these words permanently embedded in their memories. I loved school, and at an early age, I knew I wanted to be a teacher. I played school at home and I gathered my younger cousin to play school at my grandparents' summer home at Silver Lake, <coughs> especially on rainy days. It was my dream and goal to be a teacher. There was just one problem. I couldn't read. Um, I couldn't read a word until I was in sixth grade. So obviously, spelling and writing were also a nightmare. When I would stand up and read aloud, even in high school classes, my heart would race and my palms would sweat. I felt that my classmates were looking at me and sometimes trying to help me, even though they didn't understand what my problem was. Luckily, I had wonderful patient teachers that showed me the kindness and tried to help me as I went through the grades. Also, my father tutored me nicely at home. If it was 
God for all his help and support, plus my mother keeping me organized, I do not think I would have made it through grade school, let alone high school. Having a clear goal, a strong work ethic, being able to accept help from others, and learning not to be defeated by failure ended up serving me well. I entered Northern Illinois University. I struggled there, but also persisted. And as a result, I received a Bachelor's of Education in Elementary Education. Later, I took my first teaching position at Elk Grove Village in fourth grade. I wondered why I was always gravitating towards those struggling students. As fate would have it, after one year I was offered a teaching job for students that were struggling, but only if I would go back and get my master's degree in a newfound field in education called learning disability. And so this is the path I chose, or was it chosen for me? I ended up getting three advanced degrees over the course of my life. I just love going to school. During these busy years of teaching, continuing my own education, and raising two sons, I think that my best education was in my classroom. I learned a great deal from the unique special students. As I taught, so did I learn. After 23 years of teaching in special education, I became the principal at Summit School, a private school for children with learning disabilities, then in W. Illinois. After nine years in this job, I was asked to start a similar school in the Kansas City area. What a golden opportunity to start a brand new school to help more struggling students. So with my husband, Bob Fritz, we went to Kansas City. We started screening students for the program, found a school site, wrote manuals for the program, purchased equipment and materials, and opened the doors of Horizon Academy to 12 students in September of 1999. Now, over the past 13 years, the school has served over 100, 250 students who were transitioned back to traditional schools successfully. Our work continues. We have been proud to see our school grow, our students be helped, and our students' parents receive hope for their children. Our staff is learning innovative ways to serve our students better, and our board of directors is united to help this small private school for students with learning disabilities. My time at IT High School taught me about myself it helped me learn that even though I struggled in learning, I had other gifts. These gifts were developed when I attended IC High School because I was able to participate in a variety of activities, including cheerleading and chorus, the musical Oklahoma, the school play, the pep club, the Future Teachers of America, and even a member of Homecoming Court and Queens. As you can see, I proudly wear my IC leather and also my pin. I am nice. <laughs> I never would have had all of these first-hand experiences of belonging and developing my skills, confidence, and leadership traits if it had not been for IC and if I had gone to a bigger school. If I did not attend IC, I would have missed so much. The great teachers who touched me with their strong core values and my endearing lifelong friends. You see, even though I had a struggle with dyslexia, dyslexia turned out to be a gift. <coughs> the gift of helping others with learning disabilities. Because I personally understood these students who struggled. So that is the tale of my lifelong journey that turned into my lifelong joy of helping struggling students. Finally, I want to thank my childhood and lasting friends, Donna and Joe Moreno, for nominating me for this Distinguished Alum Award, and I guess Dad Wagner put him up to it, and for Principal Pamela LaVar and her staff for arranging this special day. I would like to close by introducing
opportunity to the following people. And please stand. My husband, Bob Fritz. My aunt and her daughter, my Aunt Georgiana and her daughter, Barbara, and her granddaughter, Mariah. My sister, Sheila.